So Nomad's got a real-time renderer and it's not got the kind of capability that you'd see in programs like Blender for reflections, but how do we get something like this that we can use to fake some really cool reflections in our work? So let's take a look at how we can do that. So before we look at a more complex scene, let's do what we normally do and just take a look at a very basic scene. So I've got a plane and I've got a sphere. So let's duplicate the sphere. So we've got two in the scene. Go back to the first one and we're going to make this reflective. So we'll come down here and we'll go with, our, we'll make sure it's fully white, first of all. And we'll take the roughness all the way down and the metalness all the way up and then force paint all. So we've now got a fully, what we would think is a reflective um, sphere or a material on a sphere. But unfortunately, it's not picking up this other sphere at all. As you can see, there's no reflection in it whatsoever. So what's the reflection that I'm seeing? And obviously with three fingers, I can roll around. You can see that we can ro rotate around. So something's happening there. So that's a HDRI and that comes from here. So if you look under shading, there are a set of high dynamic range images that are brought in. These are actually from HDRI, HDRI Haven. So they're available to you outside of Nomad if you want to go and download some more. Um, and what they do is as you change them, they're the thing that surrounds this entire scene that gives you uh, a reflection in any surface that's set to reflection. But it's not reflecting within the scene at all. It's just giving you a fake reflection from the environment around it. And that's how the scene is being lit as well. There's no lights in this scene whatsoever other than the lights that are in that image. So that's how this works in any other program. Now, we're not, you know, if you want to go to a higher level um, of uh, reflection and rendering, then you need to move to something that, that's got a much more capable renderer. So think of something like Blender or Cinema 4D or Maya and lots of render engines like um, something like Arnold or, or Redshift is, is one that I prefer. But we're not, we don't have that luxury in Nomad. So what we have got is this, but we can, with real-time rendering, we can add a little bit more reflection. So what you can do is you can come up here to post-process, switch post-process on, and I've already got it switched on there. So you could see straight away what happened there. So if you, if you want to know where it is, it's there. Make sure you've got max samples and full resolution on as well and also switch on ambient occlusion because that's giving you the occluded areas. That means areas that are covered. So the dark areas get darker. And as you can see, if I roll around now, you can actually see this sphere in here. It's not brilliant. There are some, you know, there's some sort of like clipping effect and it, and it does, um, it, it, it does cause some visual issues, but for us as um, artists that want to use a basic reflection in our work, then this can be really useful. So, you, can, you know, as you move it closer, you can see it pretty much reflects in that scene. And also the ambient occlusion underneath links that sphere to the real world. Now, w w what you could do is take that, that um, plane at the bottom. And, and at the moment I've got it set to red, as you can see, but I could then, I could up the, or reduce the roughness and keep the metalness high. Uh, I could change the color to white, for example, and I could go force paint all, and there you go. You can see the reflection quite well there. So that's a good thing to learn anyway. So we're not really talking about this in this particular video, but I wanted to explain that to you within Nomad before we move on. So let's move over to a much more complex scene and have a look at how we can improve our reflections in, in a fake way. Okay, so this is a little kitchen scene uh, done in Nomad. Um, this came, the idea came from a couple of people on our Facebook groups who were asking whether these kind of little isometric scenes can be done in Nomad, and, and obviously they can. So, you know, this is an example of one in, in, in the making. But let's have a look at those two spheres in the same uh, way, but in this scene here. So as you can see, I've got a sphere that's just grey. It's quite dark there because there's no light on it. And I've got a sphere that's reflective. And as you can see, because of the HDRI that I'm using, it's just not good at all. It just shows an outdoor scene, which is, is what it was. Now, if I switch on this little button up here, if I put on our... Um, uh, we'll have outline on for a minute as well and we'll also have light icons you can see that this scene's lit with three additional lights and with three fingers you can roll both the hdri you can see it rolling around here 
and the lights around in one go. If you just want to roll the HDRI, just you, you have to do it from here, from, from this area, and you have to roll just the HDRI here. But we're okay rolling all three of these because we want to have a look at what, what this actually means. So we need to now improve this reflection because in this scene, for example, we've got things like kettles, we've got things like pots, we've got a bin, and they're all reflecting. But what they're reflecting is that outdoor scene which isn't relevant to what we've got here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch those things back off so i'll actually go back up where we were and i'll switch off our light icons and i'll switch off our um, outline and i'll also switch to another tool so that we don't have anything in the scene and i'll also do something else so i'm going to bring the scene up like this i'm going to four finger tap so i'm now full screen I'm going to take a screenshot. So on my iPad, it's two buttons like that. And I've now got an image there. So why have I done that? Well, before I show you, I'll do another one. I'll do one that's a bit more like this. Move it around like this. And maybe one um, a bit more like this. And there you go. I've got three of them to play with now. Now, what you need to do now is go to your um, material and we want to change this material. So four fingers again to bring your interface back. And now if we go up to our HDRI, you can actually use those images as HDRIs or, or, or to use them in your, in your scene. So what do I mean by that? So in here, I've already brought some in that are exactly the same thing. If you want to bring the ones in we've just brought in, so you just go plus from photos, and you can just bring in one of those like so, add it, and you've added another one there now. Now, I'll use this one because I've darkened this a little bit. But what that's actually done straight away is it's given me the image that I grabbed, so the screenshot, and it's applied it as an overall um, sphere. Now, it's not accurate 100% because obviously that was a straightforward, um, you know, a, a, four, a kind of four by three kind of image. So you could go and amend that and you could change it however you want, but look at what it does for the reflection straight away. So it's brought the colors in from, from the scene. So if you look at the bin, it looks better straight away because it's reflecting what, we, what we've got in the scene already. And also you'll find that any other metal or any other reflective thing in the scene is a lot more accurate. So it wouldn't be as useful if, for example, you moved the sphere or whatever it is that you're reflecting, if you moved it here, because it's reflecting a table over there that isn't actually there. So you might want to play around with that a little bit and you might want to use those other images that I, I used as, um, uh, you, know, you know, as the ones I collected as well. So, for example, we did three, didn't we? So it might be one that's more overhead, like so and it might work better for you. Now remember, it's not just showing your reflection in this sphere, it's actually lighting the scene as well. So as well as those three lights that we had in there, you're actually getting lighting uh, information from that image. So if it's very, very bright, you're gonna get a very, very bright scene. So try and play with it a little bit. So bring the brightness down, maybe make it brighter in certain areas. So as you can see there, that's a bit too bright for what I want. So I'd go back to one of my other ones. And if the primary um, thing in this scene were these spheres here, then this would work really well. Now, don't forget, you can also switch on your, you've got your, your reflection to switch on and off. So if you find that that's too distracting, you can turn it off. It's not particularly picking up this sphere very well, as you can see, as I, as I get really close. It, it picks it up and, and, it, and it is there, but it isn't particularly um, good quality. So you've got to, you know, if you think of this as more as a, as a use, rather than getting really high-end renders, this is more about making a scene work for you as, a, as, a, as an artist. So a lot of the time we'd want to take this out as a 2D. Um, so getting the reflection just to look good for, for the shot that we're doing is, is how we would use this. Well, that's how I uh, fake the reflection. Um, the, the lighting you can play with a lot, don't forget. You've got the ability to, let me put the lighting icons back on. You can play with these a lot now. So these would be your dominant lighting source now instead of your HDRI. So what you could in fact do is come in here and turn the exposure of your HDRI right down and let the lights do the work. But either way, the reflection 
in that um, sphere is a lot more accurate when you're taking it from another image that you've created yourself. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give us a thumbs up as it does help us to get in front of other artists that might like this kind of work. And if you're enjoying it enough to give it a thumbs up, then why not subscribe and then we can send you a little notification when we upload new video content. Have a great week, everyone.